know that the Maghreb as a whole, from the extreme Maghreb to Ifriqiya, has a very long tradition as a land of exchanges, hospitality and tolerance. Cities in the central Maghreb, now Algeria, have particularly distinguished themselves, such as Tulmsen, Bejaya and Anaba. The multiple exchanges between the northern shore and the southern shore of the Mediterranean have only been able to exist on a regular basis and be maintained for so long, almost five centuries, thanks to the commitment, through an avant-garde approach, of the sovereigns of the different Maghreb dynasties. Peace treaties and commercial conventions, concluded between the 10th and 16th centuries by the sovereigns of North Africa and the leaders of the Mediterranean Rim, allowed a flourishing trade and an enrichment of societies. This is how the KISS area, or free districts according to European terminology, came into being. What is KISS area? To offer optimal conditions to foreign merchants, the rulers of the central Maghreb, Hamadites, Zianids, Hafsids, etc., had a particular and distinct district developed on the outskirts of certain Muslim medinas or in the heart of them. This district is called Kis area in Maghrebi Arabic. It is not known if this term derives from the Arabic word Kasa, castle fortress, or if it finds its origin in the word Caesar, in the sense of small town of Caesar, small Roman town, or Caesarea. European merchants found in this small city, surrounded by high walls, help, protection, and security for their people and their goods. Organization of the Kis area, traders arriving from Europe, from Genoa, Pisa, Venice, Florence, Barcelona, Aragon, Marseille, Narbonne, had the right to build in the Kiss area fondukes or caravanserais, large enclosures where travelers could find shelter for them and their animals as well as hotels that served as dwellings, stores, and warehouses. The district of course had a souk or market where Europeans enjoyed optimal conditions to trade in a fair and protected manner. All the conveniences were there, counters, shops, workshops, private accommodation, warehouses, ovens, baths, church and sometimes also a convent like that of the preaching brothers in Tulsen or a Catholic cemetery in Bejaya. The Kiss area flew the European flag and operated during the hours dedicated to trading under the principle of extraterritoriality which allows a country to allow a foreign country to exercise its authority over part of its territory. Residents of Kiss area enjoyed immunities and privileges in the host country. The representatives of the European nations were the consuls, who resided in the midst of their nationals and their goods, in the fondue itself. European traders depended, for their own affairs, only on the authority of their accredited consul, a consul who saw the king or sultan directly at least once a month. A Genoese merchant involved the consul of Genoa for his administrative procedures, the Pisan trader resorted to the consul of Pisa, and so on. The supervision of the Kiss area was the competence of the consul. This is why the Fondic police were placed under his authority. The police of the king of the host Maghreb country did not enter the Kiss area. It was the consul, in close cooperation with the government of the host country, who decided on the action to be taken in the event of an offence committed within the district. In other words, when there was reason to act against a European national, the Muslim authority agreed with the consul. At nightfall, when the transactions were suspended, the doors of the kiss area were closed and the guard was entrusted by the consuls to their nationals. The duties to be paid at customs, entry and exit of goods varied. We learn, for example, that in Bejaya, customs duties amounted to one-tenth for goods and five one-hundredths for gold and silver. In some cases, these taxes were only required when the products were consumed. Conventions and treaties reflecting great tolerance. The French historian and diplomat Louis de Mars Latrie, who lived from 1815 to 1897, specified, after a careful analysis of North African commercial treaties, in a report presented in 1879 to the members of the Historical Works Committee that the predominant general spirit had as its basis and principle the observance of conventions and the security of particular transactions. And he added that, in this respect, medieval Europe could claim no advantage over the African Maghreb. Laurent Charles Feraud, who lived from 1829 to 1888, 
French military interpreter, author of numerous researches on Algeria, indicated for his part that security and protection were assured to any merchant or Christian subject of the power with which the Sultan had concluded a treaty, or to which he had granted a privilege. The guarantees extended both to stays in cities and to sea voyages. The merchant or the Christian subject was thus placed, he and his goods, under this high royal hand which was expressed in the Middle Ages by the word safeguard among the Christians and that of Amman among the Arab Berbers. These treaties extended to disasters at sea or on land, through the obligation to provide assistance to travellers in difficulty and to keep the survivors and their goods safe and sound. What is most striking, on examining these provisions so well understood and so favourable to freedom of trade, explained Louis Adrian Burbrugger, 1801-1869, archaeologist, curator of the Library and Museum of Algiers, president, founder of the Algerian Historical Society, it is the spirit of tolerance with which Muslim sovereigns granted Christian merchants the right to freely and publicly devote themselves to the exercise of their worship, to have their priests, their convents and their churches. The Treaty of 1270, concluded with the King of France Philippe Le Hardy, is as explicit as possible and reserved the most liberal franchises for French traders. The Catalan Convention of 1285 also contained a formal clause in this regard. These trade agreements specified warranties and dispute resolution. Some of these treaties have been preserved to this day and can be considered, in the words of Louis Adrian Burbrugger, as monuments of good administration, political foresight and wise tolerance. These material conditions are only the translation of a state of mind of the time, specific to the Muslim sovereigns of the southern shore of the Mediterranean. This capital fact of the religious freedom granted to Christians in the land of Islam is confirmed by papal bulls published in Rome. Tolerance on the part of the Maghreb Muslim kingdoms was all the more remarkable in that it was not entirely reciprocal. Maghreb merchants on Christian soil, travelling on business, certainly benefited from certain exemptions and facilities, but, in no case of the right, for example, to build mosques in which to celebrate their worship. Medieval Europe did not reach the degree of tolerance of the southern shore of the Mediterranean.